Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a bell curve chart with Excel. Uh, so this is actually a question from Mario, uh, which I find is a very good question and I want to share with all of you here um, in terms of how to make one. So as usual, um, I'm using a very typical HR case here, which is um, demonstrating the performance rating distribution. So. You know, at the year end, uh, we always do performance rating for people. Um, and usually, very typically, we expect um, a bell curve uh, distribution uh, for the performance rating. So for example, outstanding the top notch people are probably 5% of your company's total population. Uh, the next level down is 15. Majority of the people will be satisfactory, the normal range um, and there's going to be someone who's below expectation and also people who have poor expect uh, poor performance so let's say this is the standard bell curve distribution that you're expecting however let's say this is your real population size um, which i just made up uh, the ratings just for demonstrating purpose so with the sample employee population that i have um, you know what the actual performance rating is actually that um, there's nine percent uh, of outstanding people uh, there's 75 percent of people who are average um, and there's only like 5% in total for below expectation and poor. And actually in reality, this is a very common scene that I've seen because people, managers are always hesitated to rate their people to be below expectation, uh, but they always wanna please people by calling them out to be like outstanding or um, excellent. Or some managers are just like, well, they wanna play safe. So they just wanna put as many people uh, into the satisfactory uh, range as possible. Uh, but anyhow, um, this kind of actual performance distribution would result in such a curve. And uh, to put both curve on one chart uh, is visually very powerful to show your decision maker that, you know what, our performance rating distribution um, is not quite aligned with the standard bell curve that we're expecting. Um, and uh, some action got to be taken there. We either bring this down or um, and bring up, um, have some forced ranking to make sure that we uh, are uh, as close to the bell curve as possible. Okay, so how do we do this chart? So this is what I'm about to show you next. Um, so let's see, um, here is the uh, rating, the, here is a distribution percent, um, and this is actual. So let's do the first one first. So select your data, and then go to insert. Uh, the the uh, the trick here is that make sure you go to scattered and select this one. Select the scatter with smooth line and here we go. So this is actually the standard bell curve chart that you're expecting. So let's, um, let's change the title to what we want. Uh, I'm being cheap um, of just copy and pasting here because I don't want to waste my time. Yeah, so this is a standard bell curve um, for the first one. Uh, but you know what, one thing you need to pay attention to is that because you're not using um, a column bar chart, note that your axis is actually not the same as the axis that you're expecting here. So actually, uh, that's something we, we have to tweak at the end. But another thing to notice here is also to make sure that um, you are having what you want. So for example, if you look at, um, if you point to the uh, dot here, you can see that actually the first one um, it's looking at is actually excellent, outstanding. Um, and sometimes that may not be the way you want. Like sometimes I, I think like typically you, you want the poor to be on the left hand side and you want the outstanding to be on the right hand side. So how to fix that? So to do that, you actually cl um, click on the access, go to uh, right click format access. Um, and here you go uh, value in reversed order. And here it goes. So now your access is actually reversed and then we don't, we, um, you don't need the six and the zeros. Uh, they're just here for uh, taking up your space. So actually you start from one and then you end at five um, and your units is one. 
and that gives you the five ratings. So actually, if you look at, if you now select the dot here, you can see that uh, the first one is poor, the second one is below expectation, satisfactory, uh, excellent, um, and outstanding. And of course, you can right click them and then add data label um, to be the number that you have. So uh, for example, I would prefer them to be uh, below, below the, uh, below the line so that I can see more clearly. So, so okay, so that is actually how we build the uh, expected bell curve. So now let's do the same thing and build for uh, the actual. So what you do here is you right click anywhere on the chart, select data. Um, you notice that you have the first data as zero one. So actually you can go in and change the name to expected distribution. Um, it's optional, but like I just do it for uh, best practice. And then you add another one, which you can now say it's actual distribution. And, and then your X value is the same as um, is this data, uh, data range. Your Y axis is the distribution range. And then you go OK. And then here we go. So the red line here is actually the curve that you have. What you do need to pay attention to is whether you have the below, um, you have it in the same order, which means that the pole should be um, on the very left and then the outstanding should be on the right. On the right. So let's also add in the label uh, here and then I prefer to have it on the above. Um, so which actually uh, and then, which now you can see that it's 75% of the satisfactory. It's the same for excellent, uh, but then for outstanding, it's 5%. So actually, dep depending on where the number is, you might need to just move the numbers around to make it more uh, stand out. So for example, 4% is definitely below, and then the 15% is above. So you might need to do some tricks here to make sure the number's making sense. Yeah, so something like that. So actually, uh, now you have, um, oh, and actually now here you see that your access actually goes below to minus 10%. You don't want that. So actually your minimum here, uh, like what you do is you right click on the access and then your minimum you go to zero and then enter and then here we go. Okay, so now with this one, the last thing we need to fix is actually, uh, the access. So how do we do that? So let me show you just in a sec. So this is actually not, um, uh, it's actually a workaround to it, uh, but then I just find it like, honestly, in reality, it's much easier to do uh, in practice when you are at the year end practice uh, time and you so crunch of time. You know what, just instead of like trying to change it um, with formula or something, just have like just create a text box you can see this is how i did it just create a text box and then um paste it in here and then make sure you hide all the numbers here and then make sure you have your text aligned with your chart and then it's making sense and then yeah, that's it. So it's that easy. And then what I also like about this chart is that um, say you're showing this to your decision maker and they don't like it, and then you you guys uh, are working to a solution of maybe force ranking to see, okay, you know what? Uh, we have too few people as below expectation. We have to change people's uh, distribution here and we have to change people's distribution here to change the uh, curve and then you may actually look at your actual employee and then think of okay how do we change it and then actually when you change it um, let's say we want to get rid of uh, we want to change some satisfactory people to excellent um, and we also want to change some um, um, satisfactory people to below expectation. So you make those change here 
and then let's say we increase the pool people to uh, to maybe a few ones and then after you make those changes you can see actually you can see the instant change of your bell curve and then you can see whether you like it or not and then you can make further change for example if I don't like this as much you know what I change this to yeah and then that brings down my uh, number there um, and then I was able to do this dynamic change because all the numbers here I have are linked uh, by formula uh, to my actual uh, distribution rate uh, performance rating so that's why I was able to change it just dynamic on the chart Okay, so that is how we uh, can you, uh, use bell curve chart to show the performance rating distribution at year end. Um, I hope that you find this helpful and like it. And um, see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.